John Cardillo joins us, the CEO of Sci ID right now. John, how are you, sir? Um, I'm doing well, thanks for the invite on air. Absolutely. Uh, I thought this was fascinating, particularly uh, coming today when Facebook announcing uh, mm-hmm. in response to Moms Demand Action and Mayors Against Illegal Guns, they're, uh, they're, they're making some policy changes, not what the uh, gun control groups were hoping for, and perhaps uh, your article at The Blaze would explain why Facebook did not want to ban uh, discussion groups related to firearms, because you say that pro-gun sentiment dominates social media. Yeah, yeah, it really does, <clears throat> and it's and it's uh, pretty simple uh, to see uh, that that's the case. The numbers bear it out. I'm actually uh, I've written a follow-up piece to that, which will run later in the week, that specifically focuses on Facebook and the changes they made. But uh, I, I, you know, as I noted in the piece, the NRA, for example, had 150 times more Facebook member support than mayors against illegal guns. Wow. That's, that's a lot. I mean, okay, but, but you know, mayors against illegal guns, that's just kind of for mayors. What about, what about moms demand action? Yeah, they were only about a quarter million. So they, they only had about 10% of the following that the NRA had. It was pretty low in comparison. And, and the, the most important number when you analyze social media is not, not to look at the amount of likes, but the amount of people that are actually engaging. Mm. And not that low number, the talking about us number, but we put our analysts, excuse me, our analysts into the thread, and they start to look at what the content actually is. And the amount of support, even, even though they had a, you know, a, a fraction of people talking about them, the NRA had of folks talking about the NRA, on the NRA's page, it's overwhelmingly supportive. These are actual NRA supporters, NRA members, uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation, same thing. But when you got to Moms Demand uh, Action, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, it was a lot of the same people just spewing the same rhetoric over and again, or pro-Second Amendment supporters telling them how ridiculous they actually sound. <sighs> Interesting. Uh, were there a lot of gun control advocates over uh, on the NRA pages uh, or the pro-gun pages? Not too many. You know, you've, you've got them interspersed right. in the user community there, and then they make their silly little comments, or they'll, you know, link to some silly anecdotal story. But by and large, I, I think common sense prevails on the Internet. I mean, obviously, I'm uh, betraying my own bias. I'm, I'm very <laughs> pro-Second Amendment. I, I mean, I'm a concealed carry holder. I carry daily. I'm a collector. I'm a shooter. But uh, I think that that common sense, a common sense mentality about guns is starting to prevail around the nation. We look at a lot mm-hmm. of voter data as a byproduct of our business. And even people that aren't gun enthusiasts, they're not people like me and yourself, <clears throat> still say, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, a gun is a metal, inanimate object. If people want to own them, it's their Second Amendment right to own them. If they want to carry them, more power to them. It's really not my business to try to take it away from you. And so the, the anti-gunners are really losing a lot of ground. And, and their, their media hype won't tell you that. Through the media, we know the slant. But uh, if you look at the hard data, they're really losing traction, losing ground, and losing their political clout, which is most important. Um, All right. So, John, uh, one of the uh, policies that uh, Facebook announced today uh, had to do with age gating, uh, I guess. They're going to say that, you know, uh, when someone under the age of 18, uh, they're not going to be able to look at ads or or look at posts that discuss uh, uh, sales of firearms or things of that nature. Um, How easy is that for for Facebook to do. I know, for instance, California also has a, a law that Facebook and uh, other social media are kind of struggling to implement right now, uh, the the eraser law that would allow uh, posters under the age of 18 to uh, delete uh, a post from the Internet uh, that they didn't want there. Um, you know, how, how easy is it for these companies to do these it, things? It's nearly impossible, Cam. You know, my business before uh, social media analysis was online safety and security. I evolved into this and law enforcement prior to that. And going back to about 2005, I was one of the industry experts that was was an outspoken critic of age gating, age verification, because it's simply ineffective. It's it's very easy to defeat. But more importantly, in a user community the size of Facebook, a study was done January uh, 2014, two months ago, Facebook had 1.3 billion users. They upload 350 million photos a day. So it's, it's really an impossibility to police a user community that size. And it's, it's, I'd even venture to say, irresponsible to deploy security resources when you have pedophiles and child pornographers uh, out there on social media. If you're going to deploy your security resources, not to look at them, but to look at a few people that might post a gun photo and might solicit an illegal sale. I mean, if you look at the report <clears throat> that caused all this hysteria, mm-hmm. they cite one incident. One incident of a 15-year-old 
who was arrested with a gun on school grounds that he fought on Facebook. So out of 1.3 billion end users, they found one incident and a few anecdotal postings. And this was the basis for a site-wide policy change. So uh, not only is it, is it short-sighted, but it's, it's pretty much a logistical and practical impossibility to HGA and uh, effectively police a community that size. And it was unnecessary because there really was no proof that there was even a problem. You know, and it's interesting. Uh, I mean, this is something that I think every parent struggles with uh, right now. But I, I find it interesting that moms demand action. Um, as far as I know, and, and I, I might be wrong, I'm sure that uh, Timothy Johnson and Media Matters will let me know if I am. Um, <laughs> but I, as far as I know, I don't think moms demand action has talked a lot about what parents need to be doing. I mean, it seems to me like that's a natural topic for moms demand action. Hey, parents. Monitor your kids when they're online. Make sure you know what they're doing on Facebook. Uh, you, you know, it seems like that's a big part of this, John. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I'm really glad you brought that point up, Cam, because I want to stress to people that as we dig into these groups, moms, put it in quote, mm-hmm. is just a catchy phrase for them, right? This, this is not a group that was formed in the vein of mothers against drunk driving. That's a, you know, that, that's a bipartisan issue. We all agree drunk driving is a horrible epidemic, and it needs to be stopped, and politicians and people from all political colors galvanize and say, this is a bad one, we agree. So they took the success of a group like that, and the really pure and, 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 and from the heart mission of MAD and groups like it, and they said, hey, let's put moms in front of demand action for gun sense and gun violence, and it's great because everybody, nobody likes to go against motherhood. In reality, this, this has as much, you know, this has nothing to do with motherhood. There was much about motherhood as mayors against illegal guns is. It just was, was, a, was a catchy word to put in front of the group's cause. But in reality, this is a far-left, gun-grabbing organization that if you look into their history, their methodology, and what, what they promote is all about the outright ban and confiscation of firearms in the United States. Talking with uh, John Cardillo from uh, PsyID. And, uh, John, you say uh, later in the week, you're going to have another piece of the blaze uh, talking specifically about Facebook's policy changes. About this specific, yeah, yeah, about this specific uh, incident, and that should run on Friday. All right, listen, I really appreciate you coming on the program, sir. Love to have you back. I'd love to come back. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely, uh, John Cardillo joins us again, the uh, CEO at uh, Psi ID.